In the last video, we left you with this here. The very first thing is, though I didn't finish cleaning up my workspace, so I don't need that stuff on the left, so I'm actually just going to remove it. And you'll see that that formatting is still there. Just a, a side note, you can't delete formatting with the delete key. You need to actually remove it, and you can do that by doing the border. So there's a number of options. I'm just going to go no border. All right. One thing that we did actually not mention was how we can actually go through instead of typing the cell. So if you remember, we went through and said equals M2 divided by M3. And that does take a while. And if you've got a big spreadsheet, it does get quite confusing very quickly. And again, that would tell me my answer pretty quickly. Rather than actually typing in that equals M2, etc., I can just type in equals and click the cell that I want, press the symbol that I wanted to action it, so the Excel math skill, in this case division, and then click the second cell. And you'll see that it automatically types in M2 and M3 for me. Much, much quicker. So we're actually gonna go on to our next little activity. I'll just get everyone to create a new sheet. And we're gonna call this one, let's, let's just call it uh, data for now. So in this particular data tab, what I'm going to get you guys to do is I just want you to create a, a number of different things. So the very first one I want you to create is let's call it item one. Well, let's just let's just say item, and then let's say cost. So, and let's also add a quantity column as well. So the very first thing, let's just write down bunny. It's going to cost. $2.50 and the quantity can be 10. Rubber duck and it can cost let's just say $3.80 and we're going to get six of those. Finally let's just say something like a computer and it can cost us $1.50 and we're going to get one of those. So there's a whole heap of different ways you can do it. Just one thing that you might notice is see how rubber duck has kind of been cut off by the column. If you do actually ever get this issue, just make sure you just change your column width. And to do that, all we need to do is move up to the top of the column headies and wait for that symbol where that's got two arrows on it. Click and drag and it will increase the width of the column. I can also when I get to that symbol, double click, and it will make it the required length for whatever I'm doing. Again, we'll make this pretty, we'll color some basic cells and maybe make those bold just to make them stand out a bit more. Back to Excel math. So from here, we've got our particular thing here and you guys should have created a summary table roughly there. So we're just gonna keep on going down. So what we're actually gonna do here is we're actually gonna go through and create some actually named references. So before we could actually go equals and type in our number, that's fine. But what we actually want to do is create a number of different things. So the very first one is I can actually go through and type in equals and then click the, the numbers up here. So maybe I want to just grab the answer and then I want to put a plus sign, click the next answer, a plus sign, and the next one. You can do it for the other two as well. And that will give me a number, so that works fine. But if I was to come through and actually use autofill and drag down, the rest of them won't work because it's actually, Excel is moving those grid references. And you can see that in every single one we go through. As we click and click up to the formula bar, it shows where those boxes are. And you can see how they've moved. So every time it's moved down, each time it moves down. But the very first one we typed was correct. And this is about absolute cell referencing. You'll see when I actually flash filled, it thought there was a pattern of G4, J4 and M4. But the very next row is G5, J5, M5. And if we keep going, that number increases. So that's not what we want. So let's delete that off. We can actually go back to this and we can actually edit this formula. And we can do that by saying, we don't want that number four to change. So if we don't want the number four to change, we actually put a dollar sign symbol in front of it. And that tells Excel, just like the equal sign says, I want you to calculate something. The dollar sign basically says, I don't want this to change. Um, for a more advanced level, it basically means that it's gonna be treated as a string and not a number. 
And as I drag down, you'll see that those cell references haven't actually changed this time. Now, in the example I've shown you, it's not very powerful at all, but when you actually get into some of your bigger uh, stuff, it does get very powerful and very quickly. So this is actually talking about absolute cell referencing and referencing the specific cell. If I want to reference have the same issue, but it's going in terms, in, col in terms of the columns, we can also place that dollar sign in front of that letter, which also does the exact same thing. And to prove that point, let's delete what, the extra stuff and redrag, and you'll see that again, it stays the same. It will keep, no matter which row I pick, it's going to keep those cell references. Again, very powerful. The other thing we can do in terms of just rather than hitting equals and then clicking what's on this sheet, we can actually go to that data sheet we created just a little bit earlier, click on data, and we can actually bring up this particular thing. So I might just bring up bunny and hit enter. And it brings up that word bunny. The only thing is if I actually come in and change that word, it doesn't say bunny in my formula bar. It actually tells me what it's trying, where it's getting that data from. So if I want to change that word bunny, I might change that to from bunny to drink bottle. As soon as I actually confirm that change, I go back to Excel math, that updates as well. So we have a number of different powerful things here. So the very first thing I want you guys to do is just complete that list by going equals, going to the other sheet and selecting those items and bringing that across. Now that you've actually got that, we can actually look at doing it. Your activity is I want you to create, let's say five more items, one, two, three, four, five more items. Give them a random cost and give them a random quantity. We'll, we will come back and look at that as to why in a moment, but just some random items. And then make sure you copy just the item name over from the previous slide. Again, making sure formatting is actually done correctly. Once you've actually done that task, make sure you save your workbook and then move on to the next video.